evolution of the industry has changed to where record keeping is tremendously more important. Made a new rule and everybody had to start keeping records. Everything's documented. So today we're going to explore farm data as an asset, as an opportunity to leverage. We're going to hear from Britt and Clay and Dell in just a moment. Uh, Clay Fox with uh, over 20 years of broad sector experience in technology, a dozen years dedicated to agriculture. He's the Vice President of Information Systems at River Point Farms. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, kind of focus today, uh, you know, nothing maybe super radical, but um, talking about not only product trace traceability, but really what it takes to enable that, and part of that is really changing the culture of our organizations and of our workforce. Um, like you said, um, you know, have done a lot of different things in technology, but really kind of started out in agriculture and have come back to it, really enjoy agriculture from a lot of other industries. Um, uh, you know, maybe not counterintuitive, but, uh, but there's a lot of technology in agriculture and really um, there's a lot of places where uh, technology and the, the data and everything else can excel compared to even, say, a healthcare or other industries like that. Um, you know, certainly we all understand the challenges that are present in agriculture. Um, you know, the products that we produce, um, all of the, the variables that are out there, you know, the labor, the regulation, all of these things are, you know, potentially opportunities, but also challenges that are unique uh, to agriculture. Um, but like most any op, uh, organization or business, you know, to be successful, uh, we have to be able to execute, we have to maintain compliance, we've got to, you know, manage and minimize those challenges um, and, you know, focus on what can be managed. Like we said, there's, there's some things out there like the weather that is hard to control, but there are a lot of things that, that can be managed. And often I see sometimes we, you know, kind of throw the hands up in the air and say, well, hey, I can't control the weather. You know, this whole farming thing is, a, is an art. Um, and that's true to some degree, but there is some science. There are some things that we can control. Um, and so we have to be careful not to, you know, let the, some of them overshadow kind of other ones that we can manage. Um, you know, so the PTI compliance, you know, uh, you know, I've heard the seed to sandwich, the field to fork. Um, you know, as Britt talked about, this is, you know, having that complete traceability, that complete, complete visibility from the end consumer back to hopefully as small a unit on our farms as possible. Um, you know, and it's, it's really driven by customers. Um, you know, uh, we were just talking about, you know, I'm working in onions, um, which probably have some of the lowest risk of all of the, the ag products out there. However, customers don't care. You know, they hold us to the same kind of um, traceability standards as, you know, lettuce or tomatoes or, or whatever that is. Um, and in the same ways, they want the, they want the information. They want to say, where is this stuff coming from? How can they add value? How they can get more money? Um, so it certainly raises the bar um, on our operations. Um, and ultimately, it's up to the growers and the shippers to execute that. Um, and that's where, you know, this um, focus on the process and the precision of how we do things is becoming more and more important. Um, you know, and so a lot of this has brought me to, I find a lot of places we're really outcome driven. Hey, we got it harvested. We've got, you know, fruit in the shed, whatever it is. Um, and we're, we're really focused on the outcome, but a lot of times the process gets kind of fallen by the wayside. Um, and so this, you know, the old adage, the end justifies the means. Um, so much of what I do and what the technology can help with is to give you the control as a business owner, as a um, manager, the control over your operation to really know what's going on, that we have the accountability, that we have the validation to say, yes, I know that this got executed, that we got the right ticket on the right bin, all of those kind of things. And so, um, you know, it's certainly a big part of management. Um, you know, it's trying to get consistency. So if I decide, hey, I can make money by, you know, harvesting this fruit, that um, I really am achieving those goals and I'm seeing um, that consistency. Um, also for the customer, that the quality and, and the way we do things are, are always there. Uh, certainly a, a lot of advantage in controlling the costs if we know that we're doing the things the way that we want it to be, um, the regulations, uh, the customer expectations, um, you know, and a lot of it, 
again, it comes back to we can't manage a process unless we can measure it, unless we have ways of knowing this is how, you know, whether it's, you know, how many, um, how much fruit got picked, how effective each picker is, all of those kind of things all come back to say, how can we be better? How can we have a competitive advantage over uh, our competition? Um, you know, and so, you know, I was kind of thinking, this, you know, this has been around for a while, but do you think about your smartphone? How many things can the smartphone do? You know, uh, we can get our weather, we've got a GPS, we've got phone, we have email, you know, millions of apps. Um, a lot of times technology is either um, kind of undersold where we don't realize all the things that it can do for us, um, or it's like having a smartphone and only using it as a phone. Um, it often becomes disjointed. We don't get all of the value out, out, of, out of it. So, you know, a big focus that I have is how do we integrate the technology? How do we, you know, aggregate that data as Britt talked about? How do we drive that so that we are getting the most bang for your buck? Um, and so, you know, it's really pushing, um, as always been said, all of those systems through so that we get the most value for your investment, we get that competitive advantage, and ultimately gain that insight. Um, sometimes you hear about the primary system. Uh, so much in the past 20, 30 years as technology systems have become more available is that we haven't, we haven't really replaced the old system. We've just added a second system. So I still got people writing stuff down on paper and I want them to do something in the system. And ultimately, you just, they can't serve two masters. I have not yet seen that really be successful because if the primary system is writing it down on paper, they're just, they don't care about the rest of it. Um, and so a lot of what we're trying to do with this culture change is really make the electronic system the primary system where we have to go back and maybe print an order or you know, notify somebody verbally, well, hey, put it in the system, put your order in, we'll, we'll text them um, versus, you know, oh, I already told them on the phone and now I gotta go put it into the system. Um, and so there's a lot of cultural pieces to this besides the technology and really making it work. Um, you know, so again, it's, it's which of these information flows takes the lead, which is the primary, which do you value the most, um, and that's what the, the employees or the, the labor force is going to pick up on. Um, so, you know, from our standpoint, um, this PTI or the product traceability has really become a much higher level with some of our major customers. Um, you know, and it's really, it's just the tip of the iceberg. Um, you know, they're just starting to really get into this, but it won't be long before, you know, everybody's kind of at that point, at least in our inter industry. Um, so some of the challenges for us, um, in the past, we would, tra we would track a pallet of produce. Um, now they want every single bag um, labeled. Um, and so, you know, getting all that information, getting the lots, um, you know, telling the employees, well, hey, I don't care if you printed extra yesterday, you can't reuse those because the information isn't valid anymore. Um, you know, getting down to where everything is labeled correctly and then to the EDI, this um, advanced shipment notice, the customer wants us to actually send them, here are the lots that are coming. So gone are the days of a bill of lading that just said, hey, you got, you know, 25 bins on there. Now it's bin number 17, bin number 18, and bin number 22. Um, you know, and so reinforcing with the shippers and the production folks and everything else that pretty soon they're gonna be calling back and saying, hey, we didn't get 22, we got 27. Um, what's the problem here? Um, so again, raising the bar, um, but if we can execute and be kind of on the front end of that, that gives us a competitive advantage. Um, that gives us a lot of ability to retain those customers um, and put pressure on our competition as well. Um, so lastly, you know, it, you know, as I've gone through this in, in my time, um, you know, it's not a technology issue. We got tons of technology we all have in our pocket now enough technology to really do all of this stuff. Um, and it's not a cost, the cost continues to go down. As it's been for a long time, it's really, it's a people issue. It's a, it's a culture, it's, it's how we um, are able to, um, to really impact our workforce, impact our organization to say, this is what matters, this is what's important, and, um, and really to drive that. Um, a, a huge part of it is, uh, is becoming order-based. Um, and especially on the farm, I think that's in some ways tough, that, you know, it's easy to say, well, I don't, I don't have time to, to write this down, or I don't have time to document an order. I just, I want to call them and do whatever. 
Um, the problem is, is if there is no order, there's no way, even if we're recording data of what that employee is doing, to say, did he do what he was supposed to be doing? Uh, did he, you know, check the irrigation system that he was supposed to? Uh, did he spray where he was supposed to? Um, you know, certainly we can continue to work on making that order easier to enter, but there's got to be an order there uh, to start. Um, and that, you know, is what I've found has been a huge key is we've got to have orders and then we can execute against those orders. Um, a lot of times we want people to record data, but how good is that data? You know, the same problem with a piece of paper. Did they fill it all right? I don't, can't afford to have somebody watch and oversee. You know, we got to leverage the technology by saying this is what they should be doing, and did they succeed or did they not? Um, you know, and so a lot of times I say, hey, we want to do it right the first time. It's really hard in a paper-based pro process to measure how much does mistakes hurt us? How much does it cost us? How many times do we have to do it over? You know, I have farm managers tell me, oh, the guy had to drive back because he forgot a tool. You know, uh, how, many, how many of those trips does it take before it says we're going to get organized and we're going to have orders and, you know, and even validate to say how many times has he forgotten the tool. Um, you know, a, another piece of it that often I end up kind of getting in the middle of is all of these different kind of constituencies in your organization. You know, certainly we have production, which may be the, the farm group. You've got a finance piece. You've got potentially customer service. Another one I should have on there is the quality piece. <coughs> and, you know, and there's a lot of healthy tensions. Quality wants everything to be perfect. Production wants to, wants to get stuff out the door. Um, finance wants to get paid for it. You know, and so all of those have to converge to be successful. And so you know, production doesn't want to have to worry about the quality too much. They don't want to have to worry about, did I account for all of my in inputs as I did for my outputs, but at the end of the day, they do. Um, and so that's another place where having the information and having the validation helps to drive um, some of that. So, you know, so for example, um, I don't let them create output if they don't have any input yet, because in the old days, we'll figure out the input later. Um, we just want to make output. Um, but adding that step there gets them to care about the input, which makes a huge advantage to is the input the right stuff? Are we labeling everything correctly? Does what we're unloading off the truck into the, into the shed match what we're outputting? And if not, we gotta stop and we gotta fix it now and do it right the first time and not just plow through and try to figure it out later. So, um, you know, so, so it comes down to change management and, you know, and it really comes down to um, you know, how do you as, a, as an owner or a manager are able to really manage the business? Um, and so certainly technology is a, a huge piece of it, you know, pulling all of those various pieces of information together, but really how you use that information um, and the ability really to use it internally uh, to validate and to, um, you know, make sure that if this is how we're going to make the business, if this is how we're going to be profitable, if um, this is how we're going to meet um, customer specifications, that that stuff is happening. And you can go to your customer, you know, whether it's an audit or a, by the customer or outside and say, this is how we do it. All the information's there. If we have a problem, we stop and we fix it right there before we go forward. And uh, that's what I got. Thank you.